one famous hardness assumption, P does not equal NP, but there's more to life than just that. And so I want to tell you about some more opportunities you have. Uh, as you may know, it's uh, super hard in complexity theory to prove any impossibility results for algorithms. I mean, we basically cannot do it at all. I mean, the one thing that we're great at as researchers is developing algorithms. And the one thing we're bad at is proving uh, algorithms do not exist. Efficient algorithms for problems do not exist. So that's why we have assumptions so that we can make progress on the subject of negative results. So uh, let's get into it. When you want to prove hardness results for a certain computational problem, the way it works is it's usually a combination of two things. You got um, a hardness assumption and a reduction. And reductions are just algorithms. And so that's kind of nice. I mean, it reduces, in a way, the task of proving hardness to you know, making, let's say, one or a limited number of assumptions and then designing algorithms, which is the thing that we're good at. So in, as I've you know, mentioned probably before in this class, a lot of complexity theory is actually just algorithm design. So let's take a look at this. Um, here's maybe the most famous or classic kind of example. Uh, we may take as an assumption that you cannot solve the three sat problem in polynomial time. And as you all learned in an introductory CS theory course, um, you can deduce from this that, let's say, the Hamiltonian path problem can also not be solved in polynomial time. This is basically just, you know, the NP completeness of Hamiltonian path. Uh, but this deduction is by virtue of a reduction algorithm. So just to remind you, this reduction algorithm R that you designed to prove this result, you know, takes as input a 3CNF formula phi, and uh, its output is a graph G, so that's the algorithm. And then the correctness property that you prove about the algorithm looks like this. You prove that if phi is a satisfiable 3CNF formula, then the G output by your reduction has a Hamiltonian path. And if phi is unsatisfiable, then G has no Hamiltonian path. Maybe I should use the highlighter instead of the pen. Not the highlighter, the uh, laser pointer. Um, Right, so this, uh, you know, of course tells you that if you could solve the Hamiltonian path problem in polynomial time, then by composing that algorithm with the reduction, you would be able to solve three sat in polynomial time, which you're assuming is impossible. Okay, so that's an illustration of, you know, how you can start with a base assumption and by designing a reduction algorithm get a new hardness results. And in fact, even this uh, base assumption uh, can itself be thought of as the consequence of a, a reduction of this type. Um, namely, uh, you can take the weaker assumption that P does not equal NP, which is to say that all the problems in NP, uh, there's at least one of them that's not solvable in polynomial time. And the reduction that allows you to prove that the specific problem 3 sat is not in polynomial time is this Cook-Levin theorem, which itself is also just an algorithm for basically transforming a Turing machine into a circuit and thence to a 3CNF uh, formula. Okay, so uh, as I said, the sort of the gold standard hardness assumption in CS theory, since we cannot prove anything, we have to prove something, is you know, the assumption that P does not equal NP, which as you well know, thanks to Cook-Levin theorem, is equivalent to the assumption that 3SAT doesn't have a polynomial time algorithm. You know, this assumption has been around for, I don't know, 50 years, and you know, it's the baseline assumption that we're sort of always willing to make in order to get started. And ideally, you know, if we, you know, can't prove anything, well, we can assume one thing and then try to deduce all the other facts about hardness, about the impossibility of designing efficient algorithms based on this one single assumption. That would be the best thing we can do. And sort of the thing that you're uh, suggested uh, is the thing that gets done in complexity theory in introductory courses. But there are some downsides to uh, just taking this one assumption about 3SAT or about, you know, NP does not equal, N does not equal P as your one and only assumption. One is, it's an assumption about worst case hardness. So it basically says, you know, for every candidate polynomial time algorithm, there's at least one instance that it gets wrong. But, you know, this is why it's called worst case. You know, there may only be like one instance or like a very small number of instances that a candidate, candidate algorithm could get wrong. And what would be better is um, if you could have like, um, large classes of instances that were hard. And in particular, if you had like an efficient randomized algorithm for generating hard instances. 
Now you might say like, why do you say better? Like, are we happier, you know, when we can solve problems? Why would we want hard problems? Well, we sort of talked about this uh, last time. It's better for cryptography. I mean, given that there seemingly are hard problems for efficient algorithms out there in the world, we may as well put them to good use and base, you know, cool cryptographic primitives on them. But for cryptography, you want typically, or you often need more than this worst case hardness. You need, um, for cryptographic applications, the ability to like efficiently generate hard puzzles, like efficiently generate hard seeming instances of tasks. So that's one downside to like uh, just this P does not equal NP assumption. And uh, the other downside is it's a little bit vague on like how hard, let's say, this three sap problem is. I mean, okay, it conjectures that it's not in polynomial time. I mean, it is in two to the n time, but you know, it doesn't, this conjecture by itself does not say much about how hard three sat is. So you might be like, okay, it's not in polynomial time, but could it be in n to the log n time? Or could it be in two to the root n time? Or could it be in 1.3 to the n time? In fact, it is in 1.31 to the n time. That's a result of hurdle from 2011. And so you see that already something kind of interesting is going on. I mean, if you care about small values of n, you know, 10, 20, 30, then, you know, these things can make a difference. So these are the kinds of things I want to talk about in this lecture, like maybe making different assumptions that allow us to get richer hardness results, uh, more precise hardness results, and hardness results that are better for applications.